In today's video, we're gonna be learning about the console and the pro channel in Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. In today's video, we're gonna be learning all about the console and the pro channel in Cakewalk by BandLab. We'll be looking at the basic workflow of the console and how it all sort of fits together. We'll be looking at things like buses and how and why we use them, as well as a little look at the pro channel, a really very cool feature in Cakewalk by BandLab. So stick around for all of that and hopefully you will have all the knowledge you'll need to get on with mixing your songs. But before we get into that, if this is your first time here and you like this kind of content, all about DAWs, home recording, gear, plug-in reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to know about my future videos. Now let's get stuck into Cakewalk. Okay, so before we get stuck into this console view, I just wanna take a quick look at the anatomy of this demo track that I've put together for you guys, because it affects the way that the console view looks when we first open it up. What we see here, in fact, is a lot of empty space. There is a mixture of MIDI tracks on here and also outputs from the virtual instruments that I've got in this track. In fact, the whole track is made up of virtual instruments, which you can see over here. I've got an electric piano, I've got drums, some trumpet, saxophones, uh, bass guitar, and a piano. You can see them in the synth rack over here. Now let me start off by looking at, for example, the electric piano, which is the first instrument that I use in the track, and it's down here. We see the MIDI for it here on this track, and this is why I like to organize things. I have the MIDI track separate from the virtual instrument track, and that is the next track down here, the actual electric trick piano track that's the output from the virtual instrument and of course there's nothing there because it makes sound uh, dynamically as we play the track the MIDI plays the sound from it so that's the way I like to organize things you don't have to do it like that but it gets a bit handy when you get more uh, sort of complex pieces and where it does get complex for me is just with the drums which start off down here I actually record my drums on three separate MIDI tracks one for the kick and snare there, one for the higher and cymbals and one for the toms it's just the way I like to do it you could do it all on one MIDI track and they all control uh, my virtual instrument drums which happens to be the uh, what's it called now again uh, superior drummer three here and that has multiple outputs it has different outputs for the bass drum the kick and the tom tom etc and they are all down here so this may look quite different to your setup don't worry about it it's just worth you you knowing before we open up the console view and the way it looks different on mine to the way it will look on yours. Now, let's open up the console view. I have a tab already down the bottom here which says console on it and you probably do too um, if, it's an, if it's a new uh, project that you've opened up but it's possible that it won't be there. If it's not there then you just need to go up to views and then click on console view here or you can hit Alt plus two on the keyboard and that will open it up. Now, once it's there, and I'm gonna open up mine by clicking on this tab once, you'll see something like this. Now, this is not particularly useful because we can't see most of it. We could drag it up like this, and this is the way I would use it if I wanna make quick adjustments to the overall mix um, while I'm still tracking. But in honesty, for mixing, this all looks a bit messy. There's too much information on the screen here. So if I was at a mixing, mixing stage, what I prefer to do is double click on that console tab, and then that pushes it right up to the top of the screen so we can't see the track view anymore more. Also, I like to hide these side panels. So over here on the left, I'll just click this collapse button. And on the right, I'll hit this collapse button. And now our console takes up the whole screen. In fact, I'm just going to move my camera out of the way so that you can see uh, the, the, the controls on the console. Now the first thing I'd like to look at with the console view to sort of start to break it down is there's a divider, a sort of a thick grey line, and I've got it over here on my right hand side, which you can drag around. That separates the console view into two distinct parts. On the left hand side you've got your main tracks, which were all the tracks that we saw earlier, all the different instruments and MIDI tracks etc. And then on on the right hand side, on the other side of this divider, we've got some special tracks here which we didn't see uh, in the track view earlier. And we'll talk about what all of those are a bit later, but for now we'll just divide it so it's over there. Now, 
there's actually a lot more information on this screen still than we need and that's because we can actually see channels for all of the MIDI tracks now we're gonna, not going to be mixing using the MIDI tracks they're just to control the notes etc so we don't really need to see the MIDI tracks here so to get rid of them what we're going to do is go up to strips and then we're going to click on that and we're going to uncheck where it says MIDI there. We'll click on that and all of those MIDI channels are gone, which means we can now drag out our divider a little bit so we've got a bit more space for these special tracks over here. Right, now we're at a much better starting point to actually start mixing um, our little piece. Now before I go into um, all the details of each channel, I'd like to talk about channel flow or signal flow if you like and how it works on a console because you might not have used a console before and if you did you might not have understood what you were doing with it. So let's go through at the top of this track over here, this is the kick drum. What happens is the signal starts from the top and it works its way down through. It goes through this gain control here. It then goes through the pro channel, which we're going to cover in the second half of this video. So stick around for that because the pro channel is one of the most brilliant features about Catewalk. It then passes through uh, the effects section here. It then goes to the send section. We'll talk about how it branches at the send section later, but uh, leave that for the moment and we continue down through to the pan control here and the fader as well as of course being able to mute uh, solo etc etc here it continues down through this section all the way through to the bottom where it hits its output and here you can see the output is master we've got a number of selections and it's defaulted to master that means from here it goes all the way across up to the top of the master track which is over here in this special section and comes down through the master track in the same way it came through the track itself and finally through to the output at the bottom which is my sound card now, while we're over here, let's also take a look at these uh, special outputs. As we've already gathered, this first one here um, is the master track here. The one next to it here is for the volume of the metronome. Now, well, I'm not going to be using the metronome anymore on this track because the track has been written, so I'm going to right click on there and select delete bus. Now we have another special uh, channel which is there by default and this is the preview channel. This is so you, you can uh, actually control the volume of the audio previews that are in the browser. Don't worry about that, we don't need it now, I'm not going to go into details of what that does. So we can again right click there and hit on delete bus and that's gone. And now over here um, in this section we just have our master output. We're going to be adding some things there later but uh, we'll leave it as it is for now. Now let's get back through and start to talk about each section of uh, this, this signal flow. Starting at the top, we're going to look at this snare drum. So we have a gain control. Basically, this sets the volume of the signal before it gets processed by anything else. It's actually a very important but simple control. And I talk about this type of control in a video I made about gain staging, a really important process in mixing, which if you're not familiar with mixing at all yet, you know, I'd leave that till later. But it's a good video. Take a look at gain staging. I've got it on my channel. It's not done in Cakewalk. It's done in another DAW. But the same principles all apply. It then goes through to the pro channel which again I'm going to say I'm going to leave that till later in the video and then comes down through to effects. This is where you will add effects. Now I've got a snare drum here which I'm going to add a reverb to. So I'm going to click on the plus button for effects and I'm going to click on insert audio effects now, I've got a lot of effects on my system. You might just have a few. And I'm just going to go to Catewalk and go through to Sonatus Reverb because that comes free um, with Catewalk. We now have the Sonatus Reverb in the effects chain. I'm going to push the reverb right up here so it's pretty sort of evident. And I'm going to make sure that the effects chain is switched on here. So I'll click on. And now I'm going to play my track and have a listen to this snare because it will have loads of reverb on it. Very 80s. Okay, so there's our snare with some reverb on it. What if we want to add also some EQ? I want to make it a bit snappier. So I want to bring out the top end of the snare. So I'll close that down. 
click on the add button and I'll add audio effects and I'll go to Catewalk again and I'm going to add uh, the Sonatus Equalizer. Again, it comes free with Catewalk, so you'll have it there. And I'm going to push up all the top end of this uh, snare so it should be fairly snappy. Now let's have a listen again. We should be able to hear that effect. It's a very extreme effect there, but good for demonstration purposes. Now, it's worth mentioning at this point that it is important uh, to the order of these effects. So what's happening at the moment is coming through, it's uh, adding all of that reverb to uh, the snare, and then the equaliser is getting the signal with the reverb on it. You may not want that. So let's drag that equaliser up to before the reverb there. I've just dragged it up above, and that's easy to do. And now it's... it's uh, uh, using the equalizer on the raw snare signal before it hits the reverb and you get a slightly different sound. Okay, so that's how we are adding those effects. Now, I'm actually going to remove those now because what if you're in a situation where you wanted to add the same effect to a number of different instruments? You wouldn't want to put a whole bunch of plugins uh, and effects plugins on every single instrument for two reasons. One, um, if you did that, it's going to use up a lot more resources on your computer, so that's not a good thing. And the other thing is, is that every time you want to adjust the amount of reverb you have to go to every single instrument and adjust that reverb or the type of reverb even so that's not very handy so that's where sends become very useful now what we're going to do to create a send is we're going to actually go right over to the right hand side and we're going to create what's called a bus this is a new channel on our console we're going to right click and hit insert stereo bus here i'll click that and we've got a new bus and that we're going to call it um, in fact reverb because that's going to be its job that's what it's going to do now on this new channel again um, we're going to add in on the effects section that reverb bear with me and you'll see what happens in a moment again cakewalk sonatus reverb so now we have that same reverb I'll turn it up fairly loud again and enable it on this channel over here. Now what we need to do is send a signal or some signals to that reverb. Now rather than do it with the drums like I did before, what I'm going to do is um, with these two channels over here, and that is the trumpet and the saxophone over here. These are my last two tracks over here. I'm going to send them both to that reverb. So let's click on their send button and then select reverb. It's there now because we created it and called it reverb. We're going to click on that and we'll do the same for the saxophone there click on that now both of those signals are now being sent to this reverb it's worth mentioning the flow here it still starts at the top goes through it doesn't exactly change the route when it gets to the reverb it sort of branches off it continues after this down through the panning and the fader etc down to the bottom of the channel but it does branch off now What's happening there is we use this control here to, to determine how much of the signal goes through to this reverb. Let's have a listen to see how it sounds at the moment. There's a reasonable amount of reverb there, maybe too much. So let's adjust the amount of reverb we're getting. And we're going to do that just by adjusting the level that we send. We're just going to change it there and the trumpets. And I'm going to change it there and the saxophones. And now I'll have less reverb. Okay, so that's all very well, but even that could be a little bit cumbersome if you were having to do that with, say, a whole brass section. Maybe you had 
you know, sort of four or five different trumpets, four or five different saxophones, etc. Um, you would have a lot of reverb controls to adjust there every time you had to do it. So that's probably not the best way to do it unless we want a different amount of reverb on each instrument. Instead, we're going to use a bus in a really different way. We'll start off by, just by removing uh, that reverb there. We'll delete the send and we'll delete the send. We're actually going to keep the, the reverb bus here, but we're going to create another bus and we're going to add that insert stereo bus there. And we're going to call this a bus brass. So we'll click on that and rename it to brass. Now, over here in our trumpets and saxophone section, right at the bottom where we've got the output going to the master fader, we're actually going to change that and we're going to send it through to brass. Let's click on brass there and now let's click on brass here. So both of those instruments are now going not through to the master but now both going through to this brass bus and that brass bus eventually goes back through to the master. What this means is that we can control the overall volume for example of that brass just with this one fader. So let's have a listen. adjusting the volume of the brass just using one fader. So that's really, really handy um, for really sort of uh, doing overall changes to your mix. But one of the great things we can also now do is send b both of those instruments through to that reverb bus so we can add that reverb. So we'll send it through to the reverb bus. And now, in order to adjust the amount of reverb on the brass section, we just have one control to do it. Let's play. So that's really, really cool, and that's a couple of different ways that we can use buses. Now, while we're here, before things get too confusing, let's look at how we can colorize these tracks. So I'm going to click over here on the trumpet, go down to the bottom to where this little gray bar has been highlighted as I drag over it. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to choose a color for the brass. Let's choose a very brassy color, yellow. I'm going to do the same for the saxophone. And I'm also then going to do the same color for the bus that they both go through. Okay, this is just a visual thing. It doesn't change the sound at all. It's just a way for you to visually keep track of your track. So I'm actually going to go through and I'm going to colorize um, all of my drums, for example, to the same color and some of my other instruments. And I'm going to speed up the video so that you don't have to watch the tedious process. Okay, so that's really, really handy um, and it makes it much easier to actually visually see what's going on with the track. And the other thing I'm going to do now is actually create um, some extra buses, one for the drums here, um, and I'm going to create that and recolor it to the color of the drums. And I'm going to create another bus over here for uh, the keyboard instruments. Um, we'll just call it keys. That is the uh, piano and electric piano. And just to keep things tidy, I'm also going to create one for the bass guitar, even though there's only one instrument going through it. I'm going to recolorize those and route all of those instruments through to those buses. And again, I'm going to speed up the video so that you don't have to watch the tedious process. Okay, so now that I've done all of that, what you can see is it's now much, much easier for me to actually control the mix over here. I'm basically creating submixes. So for example, for the drums over here, I might mix them. I can normally listen to it while I'm adjusting the mix. <laughs> But this is just for a demo. And then I've got my submix of my drums, but I can control the overall volume of the drums down here. Let's have a listen. Now, if I just want to listen to the drums by themselves, I can hit the solo button.
So it's a really good way of organizing your console and your kind of mixing section. Now, before we get on to the Pro Channel, there's one last thing I want to mention here in this sort of introduction to the console, and that is automation. I'm going to go through to the, towards the end of the track, and I want you to have a listen to the brass section right at the end. <laughs> You can hear they have that really sort of unnatural sort of hanging on. So what I want that to do is actually fade out at the end of the track. And I want that to be automated so that every time I play the track, that's happening without me having to do it manually. That's really simple to do. Remember, I've got all of uh, both of my brass instruments, my trumpets and saxophones, going through to this one bus here. And we're going to automate the fader on this. So what we need to do is hit the W key here, which stands for right, and that right enables the automation for this track and you can see uh, the things that can be automated here because they're surrounded by red that's the gain the pan at the top here this pan down here and the fader and i'm going to automate the fader so i'm going to play the end of the track and i'm actually going to drag that fader down to fade out that brass <laughs> Okay, so once that is done, we click to disable it being right enabled, and it's already read enabled. That's this R button here. So you make sure that's on, so it's read enabled. It's going to read the automation data, which is there. If I play it, and I'll show you my hands in the video. No hands. and we get the automated fader. Automation is a really, really important part of mixing in actual fact. You do it generally towards the end of your mix, but a very, very useful thing. And something that we didn't always have in the old school analog world of consoles. So um, a very important feature in today's recording. Now, let's get on and talk about the Pro Channel. Now, one of the great features of Cape Walk is the Pro Channel. Even though it was introduced a number of years ago and still many other DAWs don't have anything quite like it, it still remains one of the great features. Now, we get a little glimpse of the Pro Channel down here with this little representation of an EQ. Yes, this can actually be used. We can drag the nodes around of the EQ. Not very usable because it's so tiny. I guess at a push, you might quickly adjust something there. But a much better way is to see the Pro Channel in full and to do that we click on the little triangle next to where it says Pro Channel, click on that and we start to see the Pro Channel for that particular uh, channel strip, this one being the electric piano in its full glory. Now by default, it has four modules in there. The compressor at the top here, followed by an EQ, a tube saturation module and a console emulation module. We can actually drag those around to a different order. And we found out from the effects chain earlier that that could be important. So let's, for example, drag this EQ a little further down. So it's a little bit further down the bottom. So that's one thing that we can do. But there's also a whole bunch of other modules available to us which we can't see here to add another module we actually right click say on the blank area up here and we click on insert module and we can see that there's quite a few other modules available to us here with Kate walk now not all of them can be seen here and that's because with some specific models we can only have one instance of that type so for example we already have this compressor uh, module in here we can't can't add another compressor module. If you want to see the other compressor module that's available and swap it out, instead what you do is right click on compressor and click on replace module. And now in the menu, we can actually see there's another compressor available here. So we'll swap that out for the other compressor and you can see that here now these are based on some old hardware compressors and have controls which reflect that you just have to go through and try them out and see which ones you like best as mentioned we have a nice tube saturation there but let's get down to the EQ module this is the only module that we can't actually remove from the chain this is always there 
And as we mentioned earlier, we can actually drag the, one of the four nodes around to adjust our EQ, or we can use these knobs down here. And if you prefer, you can get uh, a bit more control by using those. But not only that, if we double click on this area here, it expands the EQ to its full glory. Here we can really get fine control over our nodes. We can adjust things like the Q, as you can see the effect that the Q has there. And we also have a high pass filter, which we can adjust here, I'll just switch it on and a low pass filter. So it's really like having six nodes in all. It's a really, really useful EQ. It has some different types here available which change the way the nodes behave. Lots and lots of experimentation needed there to find out which of those you like. But as I say, a really handy EQ. We'll close that off and then we'll move on down here. A console em emulator, this sort of colors the sound in a particular way, and they have actually modeled this on um, some old and famous uh, hardware uh, uh, consoles and the way that those consoles color the sound that, um, that's coming through them. But it's really easy for you to control. You don't need to know the history. You just have to see that there's three different types available there and adjust, say, just the main one, which is the drive there. See how it sounds for you. Flick between the three different ones and you're away. You don't need to know too much about it. Now, as well as having um, all of these, these uh, pro channels on the main channels, we also have them over here on your special channels, the buses and your master channel, etc. So let's take that reverb off that we had earlier, that Sonatus reverb, we'll delete that, and instead we'll go up to the pro channel on that bus, and we will insert, let's go through, we will insert, I'm gonna go through, we, we've got a nice breverb up there, which is a very, very nice one, but I'm actually gonna go down to the style dial effects. Now these are all uh, modules that just have one knob, so they're super, super easy to use, and I'm gonna add the space uh, module there, just one knob. I'm gonna send my electric piano through to it, so I'm gonna click on the send button and go through to reverb. There should be loads on there and I'll solo that electric piano, so we're just hearing that. And then as it plays, I'm gonna push up the dial for that reverb, have a listen. quick way to get a nice reverb and of course you can use the send on the channel just to control how much of it there is. I always recommend doing that in the context of a mix. It's not a good idea to solo and uh, sort of change things like reverb. You want to see how that's fitting in the whole mix. But anyway, that's another subject entirely. So all you have to really do is get into Cakewalk and try out all of these different modules for yourself and start to learn about them. What this does is it gives you an arsenal of effects which are the most common effects that you will use in your effects chain for most tracks. You've got all kinds of things in there without having to go out and buy lots of plugins. You really are self-contained in Cakewalk unless there's something especially specific that you want to use. So have fun with the Pro Channel. So I want to take this moment to give a big thank you to the many people who have sent me messages about this series about Cakewalk by BandLab. It seems that many of you appreciate this really basic approach so that you can just get in there, start recording and mixing your songs. So thank you so much for your encouragement there. If there is anything that wasn't clear at all, then please do ask in the comments down below and I'll do my very best to help you out. Now if you did like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you didn't like this video then hit the dislike button twice and send a letter to my mum and good luck there. Now if you like this kind of content then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to see my future videos and a couple of those videos are showing on the screen right now so I suggest you might like to start with one of those two or just go to my channel page and look at the many videos available there. Thank you very much.